yeah. So I am live. I'm standing in an area that uh, the water was probably over my head where I'm standing right now because there's the river. There's the boat launch. That metal thing there and that metal thing there with a boat overturned right there. Um, those signify to the ferries where they can drop people off here when they ferry people over to the Steelers Stadium here. And this is that walkway that I was over top of last week. If you guys remember when I was by the Steelers Stadium here, this was completely underwater here. Literally all of this, everything I'm standing at, look, all muddy, dirty, literally. I was standing up there where that car is. Um, so yeah, the water has receded. It took about four days for it to get back to normal levels here. And uh, like I said, that bridge, that's where I was walking up. Um, let me show you. The Mr. Rogers statue is right there. This little pylon thingy right there. And you guys can see the mulch. And you remember how high that water was on that mulch. I was trying to find like a water line or something to see how high that water really got, but I couldn't find anything. So I gotta go with markers that I took in the, um, in the original live video. So yeah, there's boat anchors here. You can see them here. I don't know what this truck is doing. He's gonna hit that one boat anchor. <laughs> What's up, Beth? You gonna hit it? He's right on. I don't know what the hell he's doing. I don't have my, uh, I don't have my, my grip thing. I'm just doing it by hand right now. But yeah, if you guys remember, like I said, last week, I was standing on top of this bridge here and that water was pretty high. <laughs> so I'm going to walk under here. There's some homeless people sleeping up in the rafters here. I, I noticed when I was walking down here, so I'm trying not to be too loud. wake them up you know I saw, I saw like stuff up in there on the supports and stuff so it makes me think there's definitely people here I saw a mattress over here on this side I saw a mattress I saw piss bottles and I saw other drinking bottles so all right so let me give you guys a look here so if you remember correctly I was standing right there. This is that light pole that the water was like up to here on. And the only thing I could find on here is some debris. See a little bit of debris right there? That's the highest I could find it on here. So I think the water was about that high, which if you were to measure, probably about five feet up here from the ground, easily. But I was trying to find like water lines on the bridge, you know, underneath there. I was trying to find like some type of water lines, but here is that thing I was telling you. That is the map. And if you remember from that live stream, that water, is up to here. Basically the top part of this yellow. Um, so yeah, the water was up to there, which again, about five, five and a half feet. And there's the stairwell and the water over here, I was looking at pictures and you can see, you can see there's definitely remnants of all the water here. 
you can see all the mud still down here. And I didn't even know it, but check this out. Look, there's freaking bike racks here. That's how high the water was. I didn't even see the bike. I didn't even know they were here. Yeah, these were completely underwater here. <laughs> and I mean, you can see how far that's got to come to get up here. But this railing here, I was looking at pictures. And where that last bend started, the water was right there. So it was up to there in height. Which, if you look, one two, three, four, about four steps up from down there. So yeah, that water was up to about here, give or take. If I would have walked down from that bridge and stood right here, I probably would have been right at the edge of the water line. So everything you see below me here was underwater. In fact, I think the water was up to about the middle of those stairs, if I remember correctly. So yeah. I wanted to show you guys this whenever the water's receded because, you know, I'm six foot six. And I wanted to show you guys standing next to this thing. You know, if you go back and look at the live stream from last week. Oh man, that sucks, Theo. Um, like I said, the water was up to here, like the, the word east. This is me standing. I'm not kneeling down, I'm literally standing. I am six foot six inches tall. And that water was up to here. So maybe a good six feet of water here. I don't know. But that just gives you an idea of how deep that was here in this area where I was, you know, above last week. Crazy, I know. Like I said, I didn't even realize there were bike racks down here. Like, there's bike racks. And like I said, there's homeless people sleeping up underneath the rafters here. I hope they were okay. <sighs> so yeah, guys, this is gonna be too long of a stream. I just wanted to show you guys this live. Like just the crazy difference a week makes. Literally a week ago, I was streaming this and the water was you know, up to, up to there. <laughs> I see a train. Can you guys see it in the distance? The white light moving? I don't know if you can. Oh, there it is. Can you see the white light moving? That is a train on the Norfolk Southern lines. Uh, yeah, Theo, the highway's open. Everything's reopened. Um, that part, the first part of live stream opened up on Friday. So like two days after the live stream, two and a half days. And the second part with the bridges where I showed you guys that cherry picker underwater, that opened up, I think Saturday. Because that highway part, that first one, um, that one's a little bit higher than the other one. So, yeah. But these are those lights I was telling you guys, look. I'm in line with that light right now. Okay. And you remember that light, well, that light down there, that one was the one underwater. And these lights, probably about 10, 12 feet tall easily so look I'm up here now I'm this many steps up and I'm still not at the top of the light 
I'm only about mm, right here tall. Uh, I believe so, Ice Bin. I believe it's made for flooding because it is like a part of river walk and everything. And I think, you know, the thing is when flooding happens on the rivers, you know, doesn't matter how you build stuff around it. Something's gonna get inundated with water, so. You know, the thing is, do you control what can get inundated? Maybe. I know they built the stadiums a little bit higher. I think the river would have had to gone up another four feet, five feet for it to hit the stadium here. Like on the field, I think. You can, you can see it on the... Uh, Mike Tomlin, watch me. No, Art Rooney is. Art Rooney statue, guys. Him and his cigars. Mr. Art Rooney. Um, you can look up on the, what's it called? The Advanced Hydrologic Prediction Service. I think that's the website. It's run by NOAA. And they have things like, if you click the gauge here in Pittsburgh, the, the river gauge, they have flood levels. They'll tell you. Now, it still says Heinz Field, even though this is Axeter Stadium now. Because, you know, things. But, uh... If you look it up, it'll say, like, if, if the flood reaches this level, like 32 feet or something, water hits the field of Heinz Field. Which, honestly, if I show you guys here, you can see it right, right through these gates here streak the field well i can't a everything's locked and b um security now you can walk here this is outside the stadium you know i can show you guys i'm outside the stadium see gate a see I'm outside the stadium. This is a public walkway. I can walk here all night if I wanted to. <laughs> Break in. I don't think that would be highly advised, but I can show you guys a little bit inside the gates here. I don't think security will yell at me if I'm, you know, on this side. As long as I don't, you know, try to get in or anything, which I'm not going to. I'm not stupid. Oh, look, camera. Hi, camera. I'm not looking to get arrested or anything, you know, but there's the great hall of fame. Well, what do we call it here? The hall of, I forget what we call it here. The great hall. I think that's just all it's called. The great hall. And honestly, right through that little doorway in there is the field. Seats in the field. So we will bail you out. I don't know how much bail would be. Plus, I don't feel like having charges on my record. Thank you. I mean, first time offender, never been arrested in my life. I could probably get it reduced to like a misdemeanor trespass charge. You know, with a good lawyer. But yeah, I'm not gonna, obviously I'm not gonna take any chances, but let me see if I can see you through here from this side. Oh, I can't see through that doorway. Now, I'm trying to show you guys like the field, but can't see it from here, unfortunately. But one thing I will show you is where Three River Stadium used to be. And for those of you old enough or are football history buffs, you'll know what the Immaculate Reception was So, Three Rivers Stadium in the 1970s. Franco Harris. 
I think it was a playoff game against the Raiders, who at that time were the L.A. Raiders, I believe. Yeah, Theo, unfortunately, there still is all the time. Can't fly above the stadiums ever, period. Yeah, you can't see the field from here either. But Franco Harris, guys. Where I'm walking now, right next to Akersher Stadium, used to be Three Rivers Stadium, this whole area that I'm walking in now. Whoops, the wrong one. They've developed it a little bit. There's a parking lot, parking garage. That's called Stage AE. It's a concert venue. Actually has a double stage. Um, there's, there's one stage, but they can open the outside or open the inside, have an indoor or outdoor concert. It's kind of cool. They have double doors. Where was the field? I'm walking on it. I know it's hard to believe it's only that far from the other stadium, but they literally, the two stadiums were literally right next to each other when they imploded three rivers and they had to drape all kinds of huge tarps over on this side of Heinz field to protect it from the demolition of uh, three rivers. But right up here, we have a thing built into the concrete. You can see it already. This was the field. This is where the field was for Three Rivers Stadium. You can see there's the 30 yard line. So they marked it out here on the concrete. So, you know, big three, big zero, okay. Another yard marker. And then right here, it's been determined that right here is where the Immaculate Reception happened with Franco Harris, who unfortunately passed away, I believe, last year or two years ago. It was recent. Um, but that right there, supposedly that footprint marks where the Immaculate Reception happened, right there. And his foot was just about as big as mine. <laughs> um, well, a Pittsburgh historical landmark. But yeah, so 30, 35, I guess this would be the 40 yard line here. And then they got the, the hash marks, you know, that would be the 45 yard line there. So yeah, they kind of got this in the concrete here. It's kind of cool, you know? But literally where I'm standing right now was the field that they played on for many years, was a dual purpose uh, stadium. The Pittsburgh Pirates for baseball and the Pittsburgh Steelers for football shared a stadium for many decades. I think f almost 40 decades. So, and then, you know, they put some buildings over there. There's a couple of bars over there. Um, I used to remember parking out by these bridges here and walking into the stadium. And the stadium was literally a big circle. It was literally just a circle of a stadium. <laughs> uh, so technically I did run onto the field. I'm not streaking, Theo. But uh, yes, I did run onto the field, the old Three Rivers field, technically. Oh, I farted. <laughs> What's up, Neo? Uh, Freebird, the Pirates play over there. A little hard to see from here. But see those light towers behind the bridges with the blue lights on the back of them? That is PNC Park. That is the other side over there. So they built two separate stadiums for them here. There's our light rail. There's our, we call it the T. That's our light rail system free from here which is the last stop on the other side of Heinz Field here well Akersher Stadium it's free from there all the way through town over to First Street uh, Station so 
Is there a baseball game? I think there was tonight, Theo. I think they played earlier. I think they played earlier tonight. They're actually doing pretty good right now, too. No, they wouldn't be playing this late, Theo. Oh, my God, man. Come on. Yeah, isn't it pretty cool that, like, on the ground here, somebody's going to drive by Joe? Well, there you go. Somebody driving by. But it's kind of cool that they did that on the ground here with that memorial for Franco Harris and the Immaculate Reception. So, like I said, for those of you that are football history buffs, there you go. You can look up the Immaculate Reception, Franco Harris, 1976. It was before my time, so I don't remember it, but... There is actually over, believe it or not, on the University of Pitt, um, there is home plate from Forbes Field long before my time, decades before I was even born, before Three River Stadium was built. Uh, the Pirates used to play at Forbes Field back then. There's still an out, uh, outfield wall there. And every year for... I think it's August 23rd, or it might be in September. Uh, people gather there, and they commemorate the home run, the walk-off home run, I believe by Willie Stargell, if I'm not mistaken, where the Pirates won the World Series. Don't quote me on that. I'm not a huge Pirates buff, so... <laughs> Right by Joe and ask him how much. <laughs> Neo. But no. Like I said, I wanted to show you guys that area over here by Akersher Stadium with those light poles and that um, that marker thing, you know, the map. And stand next to it to show you how deep that water was there. So. Yeah. But it's a nice night out. It's in the mid-60s right now. At what, one in the morning? Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a nice night out. It's comfy, it's a little windy, but the wind feels good. Let me see a little walk around the city, you know? Carnival season soon? I know. Can't wait, looking forward to it. I wish I had my grip. I should have grabbed my grip. I wasn't even thinking. I wish we had those e-scooters still. The e-spin scooters. I would love to drive those around. Oh, there you go, Neo. I hear another train over there. Whee! Oh, by the way, you guys can see the, the fountain now. Let me go grab... My car's right here. Let me go grab my grip. Hold on. Maybe I'll just take you guys around to all the spots we did last time and show you all the differences this time compared to how it was before. So, someone created a mobile arcade. I got my grip. My grippy grip. Let me... Um, let me adjust it. What's up, Last Unicorn? How you doing, man? Let me adjust this thing so it fits my phone here. I think it's set for the other phone right now. So I have an iPhone 13 Pro Max. That's my main personal phone. That's actually the one I'm streaming on right now. And then I have an iPhone 15 Pro, not a Max, just a Pro, that I uh, record all my other videos on. Arcade, casino, all that stuff, so... People driving by. Probably Ubers. These guys over here are probably Ubers waiting for the bars to let out. <laughs> Alright, Junicorn, no worries. You gotta watch crossing this road here. See, last time when I was showing you guys the flooding, 
I parked right there where that car is. So I didn't have to cross this. Yeah, at 1 a.m. it's still crazy through here because people fly. But let me show you guys the difference here today where that houseboat was. <laughs> So if you remember correctly from the flooding last week, that water, you couldn't even see those boat anchors on the walkway. That water was higher than those. Supposedly that is an Airbnb that people rent out, supposedly. Um, these steps that I'm at, there were barriers here, the Department of Public Works barriers, and I believe the water was up to like the second railing here. Ciego! Como estas? Muy bien. You too? Buenas noches, Ciego. Hasta bien. I hope I said that right. So yeah, let me show you guys this. See those lights over there now? That was all underwater because that's the fountain. All of that was underwater. <laughs> and like I said, if you remember this houseboat from that live stream, it was literally above these um, anchors, the boat anchors here. I can literally walk down here, hold on. I'll take my time so I don't trip down the stairs. Hi, slow, I'm Neo. <laughs> yeah, Mandy, I know. That's why I'm doing a live stream to give a flooding update because seriously, guys, the difference in the level of the river now is about 12 feet lower. It crested at 28 and a half feet. 28 and a half feet. This, where I'm standing, was underwater. Right here. There's that Mr. Rogers statue. If you remember, that water was up to about there on it. If you guys want to see the beginning of the stream, yeah, look, you can still see all the, all the dirt, the mud from the water here. You can tell where the water was. Yeah, this, this houseboat, guys, literally was above these anchors. And... If you look, me, standing next to these things, okay? These were underwater. Those were underwater. These things were underwater. Literally, the water was above them. And I want to show you just how low that water is below this walkway. It's a little hard to see, but it's about, I'd say probably a good four feet down, maybe three and a half, four feet below the edge of this walkway here. So that water has to come up at least about four feet before it starts hitting this walkway. And that water came up 12 feet last week, 12 feet from right there. Um, here, wait. Somebody can look up one of these. If you guys look up this, I know this was a little bit above the water, maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. But if somebody wants to look last week live stream, let me know how deep was this under the water? Like how far up on the map here? Because I guarantee you that most of that was underwater. Hey, Crosstown, happy birthday, man. Well, there's the last plane coming into the airport tonight. The plane, the plane, boss, the plane. Yeah, so supposedly this boat is an Airbnb. And for like Steelers games, people run it out for like $1,000 a day. I don't know how true that is. But that was the discussion on Reddit. So.
They should start turning that way to the to the airport. Unless that's someone that took off. But they're landing from this side of the airport, so is he gonna start turning here? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we should uh since it is slow, maybe I should take you guys on those other spots. Show you where the uh, cherry picker was. <laughs> wonder if it's still there. I want to stand on that boat, man. There's nobody on there. It's literally like just a little houseboat. It's there all the time. So somebody has to come clean it once in a while. So yeah, those lights are the point and the fountain and that was all underwater like quite a bit. I hate stairs, I'm a fat guy. I know, I need to lose weight, shut up. Didn't even see the tent. Somebody's tenting. I mean, it's a nice night for it. It's supposed to rain, but... All right. Make sure no cars want to run me over here. So yeah, like I said, if you guys want to see that spot over here in front of the stadium where that water was last week, go back to the beginning of the stream, you'll see it. A little birdie. No bunny rabbits tonight. I don't see any around. Just needs to walk a little more. Yeah, I need some cardio. Yeah, if I got some cardio, I'd be good, but. <laughs> All right. Caught up on chat. Oh, into the car. Like I said, it's nice because there's nobody around. <laughs> Grab my door. The hell just lit up. Oh, it must have been the street light. Jimmy says I'm so high. <laughs> All right, hang on, guys. I'm going to put you in the uh, cup holder here. Hey. Damn it. Hang on. Water bottle. Titties. Uh, Tony, we're going to take a look right now. <laughs> I'm actually going to take you guys to a different location as well. Mandy, I'm going to take them to our happy spot. Mandy and Ray know what I'm talking about. The happy place. So, again, guys, all city streets, 25 mile an hour, less speed limits. There's nobody on the road. So, it's okay that I'm holding the camera with one hand, driving with the other. I'm buckled up for safety, you know. There's nobody out here right now. Stony baloney. <laughs> Unicorn, you and my buddy Ray would get along really well. I wonder if there's any homeless people sleeping over there tonight. Usually when Mandy and I go there to just unwind and connect with nature, it's so awesome to sit there and listen to the sounds of nature. Cops are talking. Um, cheeseburger quesadilla. Ooh, that sounds good. Guys, you want to take a quick trip to Mandy's house? <laughs> kidding all right so here's pnc park i'm literally pulling up on it see the blue towers that's pnc park those garages are how the players get into there and yeah a lot of new buildings come along nice no turn on red 
I love it. 2 a.m., well, 1.19 a.m., and I can't turn on red even though there's zero traffic on this road. Take a swig of water while I'm waiting for the crossing, the, while the signal changes. There we go. Hand on the wheel. Got my dash camera going. All right, here we go. So this is PNC Park to my right now. You guys can see it. Lots of fun. This is my phone mount uh, sitting here. This is where my phone goes when I'm driving Uber. It hangs off the rear view mirror. There's a car behind me back there. You can see their headlights. There's you guys. Hi camera, I see you. All right, now turn on red on this one too, of course. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down one more block, turn around and come back. Because I'm gonna show you guys. I'm gonna show you that part with the, uh, if you remember the metal railing. So Mandy, they took out the uh, the rope. They took out the, the wooden posts and the rope. I didn't realize that last time whenever I was filming that. I thought it was still there and underwater, but they actually took them out. So unfortunately, those are gone. Green light. Make sure nobody tries to cross in front of me. There's nobody out in the city, but you know. Well, come hang out then. Well, there's nobody going hee -haw! here tonight. Mommy. <laughs> so you guys, here's the other side of PNC Park. We drove around it. And this, this street literally leads right up to it. But this is what we call our happy spot, okay? This is all free parking. It's paid parking during the day, but it's free at night. Um, after like 6 p.m. till I think it's 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. Might be 8 a.m., I don't remember. But turn the car off. This is Isabella Street. And this, well, there's a cherry picker there, but that's not green. This is our happy spot. Can I play Pokemane there? <laughs> um, so there used to be a fountain here. This circle here used to be a fountain. They dug it out. They, they actually put picnic tables here in the summer. And this is like a little dining spot. They usually string lights from the trees. They have a couple here right now. You can see them hanging there by that light. But usually this is like inundated with lights and lit up i might get demonetized for this but there's some uh, artwork over here of naked people <laughs> there's some uh naked people junicorn that's perfect for you you can pause the video there there's some more naked people doing some some work that dude makes me look small. <laughs> and then there's different uh, creatures here. There's a squid, an eel. I think it's another squid over there. This looks like a barracuda or a swordfish. Person riding a bike. There's a frog over there. There's usually bunny rabbits all through here, so it's always nice to see the bunny rabbit. Oh, we see geese. So if you guys remember last week, I was up on that bridge there, okay? I was up on that bridge, and this was underwater. This yellow railing, and that blue historical marker was about half underwater. So yeah, I was up on that bridge last week, guys. These are big steps, they're giant. It's like, oh, these are like two feet between each step. Oh, these are giant steps, man. Seriously, I'm not kidding. Look at that. Here, here, my hand for comparison. My hand is on the bottom one right now. <laughs> There's the top. 
uh, person riding their bike. I don't want to show them on camera, just out of courtesy. But yeah, Mandy and I usually sit on top of these steps here and we just kind of watch this area. This is such a cool area to see. Sometimes there's homeless people sleeping here. There's nobody tonight, but this is the view of the city you get right here. And you can hear just how calm and quiet it is. And one night it was clear. I looked up and I saw a meteor streak, streak the sky. So we'll come down here. There's a goose. Oh, and a bunny rabbit over on the left. Bunny, bunny, bunny. Popeye's ch chicken is the shiznit. Um, so I think the water was up to here. Judging by the line in the, in the grass, I'm pretty sure the water was up to here. So up to here, where I'm standing from down there. And let me show you how far down that is. Okay. Where I'm walking now, guys, this was all underwater last week. Here's the historical marker. So if you remember when I was standing on that bridge last week, the water was probably about here, give or take. I'd say probably to this white mark right there. Um, so yeah, last week, guys, those floods, why are you coming after me? I'll come after you, dude. I will attack you. I'm not afraid of you. What? What? Do you want some of this? Huh? What? What do you want, Goose? That's what I thought. Oh, I'll turn my back. Nah, he's standing there. Okay, so guys, the water was like... I remember the railing was definitely underwater for the most part. And you can see how far down that river is. Look, there's a river walk down there. And the water is another, again, three feet below that concrete there. So yeah, these stairs here were completely underwater. You couldn't even see these last week. Again, I was up on the bridge last week, guys. And if you want to take a look at the bridge abutment, that water was probably up to about there, at least. How about, about three quarters of the way up that bridge abutment, close to that sign, close to that blue sign there. So if that just gives you any idea of how high that water was here. <laughs> Mandy, you know what? I wouldn't say no. But yeah, so this, you couldn't even see this below me last week. All of that. All of that. And in fact, where I'm standing, literally guys, leaning on this railing, that water was up here. It was, it was definitely up here. So... That just goes to show you how high that water had to come to get up to here. Now, the cherry picker was across the river over there, and I don't see it, but it could be behind that bridge abutment unless they already removed it. If I walk down here a little bit, I might be able to get an angle on it. Let me see. Um... Actually, you know, if I walk the other way, I might, I might get, well, I don't know if I can walk that way. I don't know if there's anything over there to see. I might have to go across there and see if there's any, uh, anything on the bridge abutment. We got bunny rabbits. The goose is still over there. <laughs> oh, they moved to jail. All right. You know what the funny part is? 
I'm the only person that saw that on all the people that took pictures of the flooding, drone videos and all that stuff. I'm the only person that ca captured that. I'm the only person in Pittsburgh that captured that on video. No one else had that cherry picker. We got two bunnies up here playing. There's a few more over in the grass there. Hi, bunnies. Bunny, bunny. I think there's some over there, too. Can't tell. Hard to tell. Yeah, I think there's a couple over there, but bunnies. They're probably going to run when I get closer here. More than likely. It's okay. I'm not going to hurt you. It's okay. No, they didn't run too far. They stayed right there. <laughs> this one's watching me. This one's got the eyes on me. Bunny! Goose is still way over there. There's another rabbit over there. So. I'm going this way. It's a couple less steps. But there's PNC Park again. A little bit smaller steps this time. For the fat guy. So yeah, if you guys, like I said, if you want to compare last week's live stream to this one, you know, the, the, the biggest one that'll be an indicator as to how high the water went, it's going to be that graffiti next to that cherry picker. See, there's the lights. See the lights? Well, I think he's more interested in uh, eating grass, so. The fountain. The fountain is gone. Oh, no, wait. Oh, that didn't sound good. <laughs> Let's turn this thing on. Anyone know how? Is there a button? No, that's locked. Anyone know how to run these? What's up, PJ? All right, let's go across the bridge. I'm not going to walk it this time. I'm too fat for that shit. Don't get arrested. <laughs> Mandy, they wanted me to break into uh, Akershire Stadium earlier. All right, guys, we're only going across the bridge, so I'm not going to buckle up this time. So, turn my headlights on. Do a quick three-point turn. So there's nobody here. No crazy guy going, yeah, tonight. Oh, there's somebody walking there on the bridge, so... Not that I don't feel safe. I feel safe in this city, 100%. But you just never know with people this time of the night, you know. When I was out uh, playing my free play at Jack Thistledown like a week ago, a little over a week ago, I was getting in the elevator to go to my car. And these other dudes got on. And this one dude just stared me down the whole time. And I'm like, we good, dude? He goes, are you good? I'm like, I'm just trying to go to my car, man. But he stared me down this whole time, and I'm like, bro. Like, just don't. <laughs> Mandy, that's funny. So, you guys, we're driving across the bridge. That's the one I walked across last week. Gotta wait for the light to change. Oh, there's parking tonight. Yeah. Gotta wait for the crosswalk and the lights change. What's up, Tony? Rob says you need a key. Tony says sounded wet. What sounded wet? <laughs> Me? No. Not wet, but uh, 
definitely um, definitely gonna have to hit the restroom sooner rather than later. I'm gonna park right here. Right now it says no parking, but at this time of night they don't care because this isn't like rush hour traffic or anything. So I'm just gonna chill right here. This car's coming by. All right, turn my headlights off. Let me take a swig of water too. Mandy is the 2 a.m. road rage. Uh, Mandy, Mandy was pissed off earlier at uh, at a vehicle. <laughs> It's my dash cam shutting off. It goes into what's called parking mode, where if the vehicle gets bumped or something, it'll record for 30 seconds. So, 10 years, PJ? Wow, that's a long time, man. It is so nice out here. It's a little humid, to be honest, but it's warm, it's comfy. Good year. All right, guys, so you remember this one from last uh, last week. Literally, it's a week ago that I streamed that flooding. About two hours from now in the future. A week ago. Make sure there's nobody coming so I don't get run over. I'm going to fart again. Ugh. Had tacos for dinner, so. Ooh, that was silent. All right. I'm having fun. All right. So, you guys can see the difference here. There's a road down there that was flooded. And if I remember correctly, that water was up to right below these electrical pipelines here. Here comes a car now. And there goes one under. So yeah, if I'm not mistaken, I believe the water was up to like one to this third, like, I don't know, formation line on the cement walls. I know it was pretty high. Um, all right, let's go take a look. Hey, look, it's the Andy Warhol Bridge. Well, this isn't the bathtub. This is the 10th Street Bypass. And they still have their thing here, but you notice there's no river down there tonight. You can walk down there. Now comes the big test. Let's see what the graffiti looks like. Wow, what a difference. All right, let me get up on the bridge a little bit here. Holy crap. Uh, so... That eyeball... The water line was literally at the eyeball, okay? The crying rain eye. Look how much lower that is. If I were to walk down there, that would be above my head. If I were to walk down here, that would literally be above my head. So yeah, like I said, if you want to look at the bridge abutments compared to last week, you know, that water was pretty close to those blue signs last week. And you can see there's concrete, there's a walkway, and that water is probably only about two feet below this walkway here. It's not much, maybe a foot. The river walk? <laughs> no. Um, 
But that that is probably no. The water, Tony, is back to normal now. It is at normal running conditions now. This is this is where it normally is right here. So yeah, this side over here, it doesn't take much. It only has the water only has to go up uh, four feet, I think, for it to flood that that. Um, what the hell is that? What the hell is that going under the bridge? Hold on. I wonder if we can catch it on the other side. I'm probably too slow. Nah, there's. Damn it. <laughs> I forgot about this thing at the end. If I if I was a runner, I could make it, but I'm not a runner, so. Mandy with the 20 month membership. Thank you. So yeah. Like I said, guys, it's not going to be a long live stream tonight. I didn't even expect to go this long, but you can see the difference between what it was a week ago and what it is now. And uh, like I said, the river's crested at 28.35 feet, so almost 28 and a half feet. Um, Wait to cross 7 at 42K. Wait to cross seven at four to wait, 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 wait to cross seven. At I'm having fun with that. Uh, but yeah, guys, the, the rivers went up about 12 feet because normally they're at about 16 foot deep. And like I said, they crested at 28.35 feet, which is seven. Wait, wait, seven. wait to cross four to K at seven. So yeah, the, the rivers came up, like I said, about 12, a little over 12 feet last week. And, you know, it's not one of, it's not one of our worst floods. In fact, it didn't even crack the top 20. But most of those floods happened 70 years ago, 80, 90 years ago, uh, before they built the dams and stuff along the rivers to help control flooding. So... Like the St. Patrick's Day flood of, I think, 1936 it was. Again, 50 years before I was born. But he's a naughty boy now. <laughs> it's fun. Um, yeah. So yeah, like I said, guys, um, the rivers are back down to normal. Uh, 16 feet is the normal um, depth of them. And in fact, one of the, if you take a cruise on one of the river boats, they, uh, they make a joke. The captain usually makes a joke during the sightseeing, uh, the one hour sightseeing tour. He'll say, if the boat goes down, I'll go down with it. <laughs> because where he's at on the bridge, um, where he's at on the bridge of the boat, it would be above the waterline if the boat sank. So, in fact, most of the river boats that we have here, if they sank, the top deck would be above water once it hit the hit the bottom. So, and it's funny too because the two rivers have you know the three out of the three rivers, two of them they have different uh, bottoms to them. The Allegheny River is river rock. Okay, so when you see aerial pictures of Pittsburgh and there's been like rains and flooding and stuff. The Allegheny River is usually green, like it has a dark green color to it. That's because of the river rock on the bottom of it. Whereas the Monongahela River on the other side is a mud bottom. And it's very easily disturbed with a little bit more current. I hear a helicopter. There they are. Probably going in for a landing over there. There's a there's a hospital over there, uh, Allegheny General Hospital. Yep, that's exactly where they're headed. Yep, they're heading over to Allegheny General Hospital. So that's Life Flight that's flying by. We have two, we have two different types of medical helicopters here. We have Life Flight, which is AHN Allegheny Health Network, and Stat Medevac, which is their own business. They're not backed by any hospital, so. Um, but yeah, anyways, as I was saying, like I said, the rivers are normally 16 feet. 
And this flood we had last week was, I think, number 22 historically. So, yeah, it didn't even crack the top 20. But I don't think – the last time we cracked anything in, like, the top 10 was 20 years ago when Hurricane Ivan came through. I'm trying to remember where that one crested at. I think it crested, like, 34 feet. It was either, like – no. I think it was 31 feet. Because they said we were we were just shy of it with this flood. Like, we would have had to go up a couple more feet. But that 2004 flood, man, that one was bad. There was a lot of major flooding, especially in the tributaries to the rivers. And, yeah, so oh, we're having fun. So, yeah, this one that came up, like I said, to... 28, almost 28 and a half feet. Pretty significant, obviously. Um, do they dredge the rivers? Not normally. In fact, there are dive teams here that recreationally dive the river and occasionally they'll find cars down there. Like people that drove off of stuff and drowned and in their cars and you know, usually it's a missing person, you know, so, if you, so basically the idea is if you're a missing person in Pittsburgh, you're probably in the river somewhere. More than likely, or, or, well, you're in the river more than likely because A, your body's either going to be found floating against the dam, one of the dams, or B, you're going to be sunk in the river somewhere. So, um, I mean, it's a sad, sad reality, but uh, unfortunately that does happen. In fact, they just found a missing guy from one of the neighboring counties in one of the rivers here uh, yesterday. And speaking of, if you guys remember my post about that one YouTuber, um, a guy I used to watch all the time on YouTube, Hobo Shoestring, uh, down in Johnson City, Tennessee. Unfortunately, they did find his body in the lake behind his apartment, so... Unfortunately, that was a very sad end to that one. Um, you know, just seemed like a really carefree, uh, living life kind of guy. And unfortunately, um, you know, don't know what led to it, but it's just, it's sad that they, uh, that it came to that, unfortunately. That was, uh, yeah, that was sad to hear, unfortunately. I enjoyed his videos a lot. And I'm going to miss him. He loved riding rails, and me being a rail fan, you guys know I've posted about trains and stuff before. In fact, I have a couple new videos about trains that I um, recorded recently. I have uh, one of the Loram Rail Grinder, which is the machine that grinds the, the tops of the rails to make them more um, universal to the size and shape, so they last longer too. Oh, starting to rain. I can feel the drops hitting my head. Oh, here comes the helicopter. They took off again. That was quick. Whatever they're doing a transport, or if they drop somebody off, maybe. They might have did a quick drop off. So you had hospitals back over there. Um, yeah. Yeah, Tony, it's unfortunate. Like I said, it's very sad uh, to hear about that. I was kind of hoping for a better outcome, but um, unfortunately. What the hell was that? Something made a weird noise over there, like an like a air compressor. starting to rain. I can feel it hit my eyes. I literally had one raindrop just hit my eye. <laughs> yep, it's starting to rain. You can see it in the, you might be able to see the drops on the, uh, the back window here. See a couple drops of rain here. Let's see if we get the light out of the way, if you can see them. Yeah, see that, see the little drops? <laughs> It's just spitting, nothing crazy, but literally of, of you know, all those like single raindrops that are falling, that one hits my eye of all places. 
<sighs> so yeah. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Like I said, I wanted to show you it got slow with Uber. I dropped off in town here and I said, you know, I think I'm going to go do a live stream showing the uh, where the flooding was and show you the differences here. I can't show you the bathtub section because that's going to be reopened. Remember that part I was walking on I said was uh, like an expressway? I can't walk on that tonight. <laughs> I'll get hit and killed. Oh, hang on. Oh, that didn't sound good. I'm going to have to go find the sheets and take a shits soon. Um... <laughs> sorry hey do you guys know what you see on camera is what you get in person man this is this is who i am and this is how i am so you know when, when, when and the thing is you know about farting we all do it you know everybody burps everybody farts everybody pukes everybody pees everybody shits you know i don't understand why people have such a big qualm about it like oh it's hush hush i have to go poop we all poop. Everybody poops. You know? Well, yeah. That too, Judicorn. <laughs> that too, but that's a different story. That's that's for the uh, that's for the OF channel, uh, Judicorn. <laughs> that's for the OF channel that you know I should start, but I don't know. Anyways. <laughs> No, like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Like I said, it was a great night to be out here walking around. It's comfy. It's, let me see what my watch says. Hold on. It's, well, 59 degrees. And, you know. Oh, Jesus, Mandy. Late night with JJ Jenner 1. Welcome to the channel. Hope you're all prepared. Do you have your leather straps? and your KY jelly and all your peripherals. Do you like the late night Joe voice? <laughs> actually, my throat hurts because uh, before I did this live stream, I actually brought a dude in from the airport who's never been here before and his name was Theo. Um, he sounded Australian. He was here for vacation and leisure, leisure as he put it, <laughs> a holiday and leisure, holiday and was having a good time. Um, he's here for a Penguin game, actually at least, I think he's gonna try to go three, he said, while he's in town. And it's actually the last three home games they have. And then he's gonna try to go to a Pirates game at least while he's here. And he wants to check out a bunch of stuff, but he's he's here for holiday and leisure. So. But I was talking to him the whole way into, in from the airport. It was about a 20, 25 minute ride and he wanted to know, he was asking all these questions about the city, things to do, things to eat, the history, um, asked about the flooding, and I was the whole time. So, and now I've been talking to you guys for an hour and 10 minutes here, and throat's feeling a little raspy. I got recolas in the car. I'm gonna get a recola and I'll make sure that, uh, you know, take care of the throat a little bit, but. Well, I guess I have to retitle this because it wasn't as short of a stream as I thought it was going to be. Um, I might go to Dave and Buster's on Wednesday here, guys. I got to talk to the amusement manager down there. Um, I have a card, a phantom card out there that they've tracked down. It's taken two years. Oh, my God, Junicorn. <laughs> Junicorn, I love you, buddy, but uh, unfortunately, I don't go that way. <laughs> I'm, I'm not that way, my friend. I wish... I wish I could say yes, but uh, unfortunately, I am not. <laughs> but um, I might go to Dave and Buster's later today. And if I do, I'll probably do a live stream from there. So, Tesla. Well, the rain seems to have. Oh, you deactivated? Why, dude? All those weird messages and stuff. But I have, um, like I said, I have a phantom card that's been out there in limbo for two years that i don't know what happened the chips and the tickets went into the, the the phantom verse and luckily the amusement manager here was able to track everything down and i have all the physical cards but none of them show these tickets and chips on them 
but they're out there in the ether and he said he can get them back to me. So um, if, if I can get those, I won't have to charge anything and I'll have to, uh, I'll, be, I'll be able to play. It's almost 900 chips and 58,000 tickets. So yeah, <laughs> I've been chasing these things down, like I said, for almost two years to try to track where they went. Excuse me. Oh, I'm still tasting the tacos, man. I had those. God, I had those at 8 o'clock tonight. That was, what, so almost six hours ago? Oh. I shouldn't be tasting. I think I have gastroparesis, which is the paralyzation of um, your digestive system. It's slower to digest stuff. Like, I can't eat ice cream. Like, if I eat anything dairy about three to four hours before I go to sleep... Um, Oh, sorry, Junicorn. Um, yeah, if I eat anything like ice cream or dairy products, like two to three hours or before I go to sleep, um, I will have a bad, um, not regurgitation, but when I'm sleeping, laying down on my side, my stomach will force stomach acid up and I will uh, basically aspirate which means I can't breathe because it gets into my lungs and it feels like I'm choking to death, which I literally am. So, so I got to watch the stuff I eat and how long before I go to bed that I eat it. So yeah, not fun. Well, back in the car. Um, GERD. Well, I think it's, I, I think it's a combination of GERD and gastroparesis. Because, again, six hours later, I'm still tasting tacos that I ate, you know, again, six hours ago when I burp. And that means they're not digesting, which is horrible. Even though I'm literally drinking a liter and a half of water with it to try to, you know, flush it through. But yeah, GERD is a part of it. Oh, here comes a cop. Hello, cop. What's up? Is he following that car? No, he's turning up that street. A park where it says no parking, but to be honest, Pittsburgh police just don't care um, about traffic stuff anymore. You can literally run red lights, stop signs. They're not allowed to pursue. They can't pursue you. Um, and basically... Unless you're like somewhere where there's like an event going on and you're parked, they will, they'll tag you and tell you then. But if there's no event going on, they don't care. Unless you're like blocking, like, see, like right here behind my car is the exit to this parking lot, but it's not blocked by my car. And in front of my car, there's a road right there that, you know, that's, uh, I think that's what, 8th Street? No, that's an alley. 8th Street's there. But, uh, yeah, I'm not blocking, like, the road or the parking lot, so they don't care. And, I mean, I'll be straight honest. When I'm in the city here, because of all the timed lights, the lights are literally all timed in the city, most of them. When you get out of the city, like, still in city limits, but out of downtown, they do have lights that are on sensors, that work better with the flow of traffic at night. But in town, if there's no one around at 3 a.m. and I'm sitting in a red light and I know it's going to take 20, 30 seconds to change, I'll look and I'll go because I don't care. I'm not going to sit there for a timed light at 3 a.m. when there's no traffic on the roads, you know? I'm sorry. I'm not causing an issue. I'm not putting anyone in danger because there's no cars around me. So why sit there and wait, idling, burning my gas? When I could be driving and moving, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to sit there and waste my time and my gas at a red light. <laughs> hey, ghost. What's up, Cheryl? How you doing? I saw your thing, uh, I think on, uh, on Instagram about your Facebook. Um, someone in your family posted something on your Facebook for you. <laughs> PJ says that would be bullshit. Well, it's not just, I mean, it's just, oh, Lil G, Mr. Gary, 
Tell him we said hi, man. We miss him. We, we would love to see him back on here again. I miss I miss talking to him, man. He was he was pretty cool. Hope he's doing good. Um, but yeah, I mean, in the middle of downtown at 3 a.m. when or 2 a.m. like right now when there's nothing going on, why should I sit at a red light when there's no pedestrians, no traffic? Why should I sit there? You know? Oh, the air feels good. I got the I got the car, the air's on. It feels good. <laughs> Blowing right on my face. I'm gonna plug it in my phone because I don't know how low the battery got. I can't it's one thing I wish YouTube would allow you to see your battery of your phone while you're streaming. I've suggested it to YouTube creators and other stuff many times, and they won't do it. I don't know why, but um, I missed the other membership. I think it was Neo that did it. I'm sorry, Neo. Yeah, Neo, member for 17 months. Dang, I'm three months behind Mandy. Yeah, sorry, guys. I missed those. I didn't mean to miss them. I'm, I apologize. <laughs> I got to get another members video out to you guys. I have some recorded. I just got to get them out there. They're uploaded. I just need to wake up by like 3 p.m. to, you know, make a community post about it. I know I can schedule community posts, okay? I know. Don't berate me. But, um... You guys want to see where Flame works? I could take you over to Arsenal Lanes. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm not driving over there tonight. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you can see, like, Pittsburgh is not a bad city to walk around at night. You know, even in the middle of the night, you can walk around with no issues, you know. Should Mandy go take crap trips or come hang out with Joe? Uh, come hang out with Joe. We'll go to the casino. <laughs> I'll go live on the other channel. <laughs> yeah, right. Get my ass kicked out of there so fast. It's not even funny. If I wish I wish I had money to go to the casino. Trust me. I wish I did. I would love to. But. Although at this time of night. Unless like we're being really. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not obnoxious. But like if we're being. Like very. Um. What's the word I'm looking for? I can't think of it. Um, I can't think of it. Eyes broke. Yeah, I know. I don't have money either. Trust me. I I might go out to Jack on Saturday or Friday, Mandy. Um, because I have 95 in free play and I have another 50 in free play out there. So that's 145 in free play out of Jack on Friday that I might go chase. That might be worth it. Salacious. <laughs> Malicious. No, I was trying to think of something else. Um, PJ, I... I'm trying to remember if I have a double top dollar video or if I put one out recently. I hear another helicopter. A little blurry, but there they are. Take me with you. Come steal me. <laughs> Now, like I said, Mandy, I have uh, 95 in free play. I have it twice this month. I have it from the 1st to the 16th and then like the 17th to the 30th or something, or 1st to the 15th and 16th to the 30th. So I have 95 twice out there this month. And then I have, like I said, Friday I got an email that I have something that's uh, guaranteed 50. It could be more. So 
I'm going to have a minimum of 145 free play. And I mean, I know it's an hour and a half drive, but if somebody's going to tell you, hey, here's $150, but you have to drive an hour and a half, 90 miles to a casino, run it through the machines at least once, and then you can take it home. Would you do it? Those of you that are gamblers, would you go for that amount? And a lot of that really is from my December play out there, my January play out there, and then when Will was here in March. You know, we did that live stream in early March where we played on that $1,000 for, for goddamn ever, man. Three hours, and we still ended up even. So, 25 to 400 well, we know what you're going to get. So, yeah, mine's 50 to, I guess, probably 500 at that point. I don't know. I'll have to look at the email. It's on this phone, so I can't, I can't look it up. If I was streaming on my other phone, I could look it up, but... Oh, here comes the rain. Starting to rain. Look at the windshield. I'm glad I got in the car. <laughs> I didn't realize it was going to start raining here uh, that quick. Again, everything is on this phone. My radar, my email, everything. I should probably, I should, I should use the other phone that I got it for, you know? The other phone that I got to, to freaking stream on YouTube and record for YouTube from. So... Texting while driving is illegal in all states. It's been, PJ. Texting while driving has been illegal for a long time. Um, talking on the phone while driving is only illegal in, in so many states. Um, in fact, a lot of states don't even allow you to use hands free anymore. But I can't tell you how many people I see driving down the road that their, their head is literally down like this while moving on the road at, you know, 70 miles an hour. Well, at least this will wash all the bugs off my windshield. That's a plus. Hey, look at my back window. <laughs> look at all the water on my back windows. Look at this. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't surprise me, PJ. All the time, man. Like I said, I see it all the time, too. I mean, I drive every single night. I mean, yes, there's less cars on the road when I drive, but, again, I'm out when the drunks are out. I'm out when, you know, you know the people drive 97,000 miles per hour. So. Uh, I should save up a little bit for Friday here. I should sell some arcade stuff. By the way, um, I have wristbands, guys. I got to get to selling those. I got to make a post about that. Um, the wristbands, you know, the my JJ General 1 wristbands. Um, it's going to be 5 bucks for a wristband. It's going to include a sticker in it. And uh, that includes shipping. So that'll be that'll be shipped out to you. 5 bucks shipped out. Uh, or you can get three of them for 10 bucks. I think that's a pretty fair deal. And again, that includes being shipped and everything. So it's, you know, it's five straight. Um, so I'll get those details posted for you guys. Like I said, I got that new shipment of wristbands. They look way better because I, if you see on Instagram from Wristband Brothers, I actually won their one giveaway. <laughs> they gave me a uh, $100 gift card for their site. And I bought 150 wristbands, and I had to pay two bucks for it to get it chipped to me. Yeah, Mandy. Joe should try the honey barbecue. Buffalo wild wing sauce is the best. I mean, I like honey barbecue. It's pretty good. I mean, I've had their stuff. I've had uh, honey barbecue at Buffalo Wild Wings, PJ. That's usually what I get with the boneless wings there. And I don't care what people say. Boneless wings are not chicken nuggets. They're meatier than chicken nuggets. They're shaped different. There's more to it. Mandy, shut up. I know what you're going to say. I'm growing into facial hair. The mustache is growing down to here. Although I do need to shave the rest of this. I need to take all this off. All this this part of it. 
But the goatee's finally coming back in. Looking good, finally. McDonald's chicken is pink slime. Yeah, I don't eat their stuff, and I don't know how people did. I tried their chicken nuggets one time when I worked there when I was 18 years old. That was 22 years ago. When I worked at McDonald's when I was 18 years old, I tried a chicken nugget one time, and I thought it was disgusting there. Mandy, we know you prefer bone-in. <laughs> I'm not sorry. Take that joke how you will. It's two ways. Like Mandy taking it two ways. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I'm picking on her now because I can. No, guys, usually this is the time of night that Mandy and I are sitting at the airport waiting for the last plane to land and wait for rides. But tonight there's no planes coming in until 5 a.m. The last plane landed at... I think it was 1.30. So. <laughs> Mandy, I do need a shoulder massage, though. My shoulder is freaking killing me, man. Oh, by the way, how many of you guys got to see the eclipse yesterday, Monday, whatever day you want to call it now? Um, anybody get to see the eclipse? I got to see the totality. Oh, my God. That was freaking awesome. Awesome. I don't care what people say. It's not overhyped by any means. It is literally a 10 out of 10 experience for me. I would absolutely do it again um, in a heartbeat. The moment that shadow engulfs you and the sun is completely covered by the moon and you can see the solar flares around the sun, the moon, you know, coming from the sun, and the corona is just glowing. Oh my God! It is so beautiful as an astronomical wonder. I I just I can't believe how freaking awesome that was. There's two people out here. I don't know what they're doing. She's hanging on him. Yeah, you're on my camera. Hi. Is she going to blow them right here? She might. They're drunk as hell. Holy shit. I can see them stumbling everywhere in my mirror. You guys need a ride to your hotel room? Do you need a third? I know a few people. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, anyways, the... Um, the live stream is or the live stream. Listen to me. The eclipse is amazing, but pictures and video, the pictures and video do not do it justice to seeing it in person. Like it is so much more elegant and beautiful and just breathtaking. It is literally one of the most awesome sights I have ever seen in my life in the 40, almost 41 years on this planet. I am so glad that I drove to the totality and I'm actually glad it was close to me because all of the other eclipses I've ever been alive for, I've never been anywhere near here. You know, the 2017 when the closest you know, driving would have been about a 12 hour drive to get to totality. Um, and then back in like, I think it was like 94, 95, I know there was an eclipse and I was at school and I remember we got pretty close to dark. I think we were like 90% totality then, but it was, oh yeah, the traffic. Oh my God. So yeah, we're, we're not built around here for traffic for any type of a major event like that. Um, what normally should take me an hour drive took me two hours, <laughs> so not to drive up to there. Up to there wasn't bad because most of the people already went up the day before. There was some traffic, but I mean, like right before the eclipse, there was a ton of traffic leading north still. Um, but coming back home, oh my God, forget it. It was red on the maps for what? Eight hours, nine hours after the eclipse. And I mean, it was red on the maps for... 80 plus miles. 
It was ridiculous. The amount of traffic that was on the roads, it was crazy. But again, the event itself, if you ever get a chance to go see an eclipse, a solar eclipse, lunar eclipses are different. I've seen a bunch of those in my life. If you ever get a chance to see a, a solar eclipse and you get to see totality, it is amazing it is literally just this this breathtaking awe-inspiring sight and it just it's so crazy and again i'm so glad i got to experience it in person because i would have been so upset if i would have missed that you know and like later on in life if i would have seen one and been like oh man this is what i've been missing my whole life and i missed it when it was that close to me so, if you ever get a chance to go to a solar eclipse or be in the path of totality, go. Do it. Make it happen. Do whatever you can. It is just amazing. And I don't know how else to describe it, seriously. When you see that little bit of sliver of sunlight disappear completely and you just see the moon with the corona, it, 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 it's just it's so it's just an awesome sight. It really is. I took some pictures and again, they don't do it justice because that was my, you know, that was just my iPhone taking pictures. So it wasn't like a high quality camera or anything. Nothing crazy, but oh, hello, pickup truck. Hit the curb in front of my car. Um, but yeah, if you guys, like I said, if you guys get a chance to go see a solar eclipse in person and to be experiencing totality, do it. Don't don't him and ha about it. Don't eh, I don't know. Go see it. Uh, trust me, you're gonna you're gonna believe me. You're gonna think back to this and go, my God, he was right. Um, the totality of the eclipse was freaking just amazing, and. I'm so glad I got to see it in person with my own two eyes. And yes, I have my solar glasses. They're still here somewhere. I still have my solar glasses. So yes, I had the special glasses to look at it and everything. And yes, they were certified. My eyes do not hurt today or yesterday or whatever. Um, but anytime I did look too, I, I, A, I had my regular sunglasses on. So what I did was I was wearing my regular sunglasses like this and then I held the eclipse glasses in front of it and looked at the sun then so I basically had a little bit extra protection with the regular sunglasses I know it's not much but I had a little extra as well and supposedly you weren't supposed to look at it just directly for you know a long time 30 seconds at most I only looked at it for like five to ten seconds each time I I would just take a peek at it go yep there's a sliver of the moon and then that was it I would take a look <laughs> You know, just a peek and see how far it was along. So, but you could see the shadow coming. The You could see the shadow coming at us. And actually, because of the shape of the moon, if you look to the north from where we were, you could see it was already dark over there. And we were in the part of the shadow that still had to cover the sun. And then once the, once the moon is completely over the sun, it looks so cool. It's a 360 degree. It looks like a sunset around you, 360 degrees. It is something just phenomenal to witness. And then you can see the light coming at you. Like you can see the shadow moving away. You see the light start coming at you. And then you see that they call it the diamond. That little sliver of the sun starts peering again. That's when you got to put the glasses back on. But, I mean, it really is breathtaking and just a marvel in this world to see. So anyways, um, Fortnite, yeah, I don't play F Fortnite, so. Yeah, Mandy, you're sleepy because there's no rides out there. PJ, I don't play Rocket League anymore, man. 
Uh, nothing for April's Fool's pranks. In fact, I didn't even see many this year. The only thing I saw, um, well, like a couple things. One, a local fire department joked that they were going to buy a ladder truck. They're in a very rural area with no no tall buildings. They have no need for a ladder truck. They, they made a joke about that. Um, and I think Kevin Smith did a joke about Dogma Remastered coming out again this year. I don't think that's a real thing, but never know with him. But as far as April Fool's pranks, like I said, I don't do those because I think they're childish. I think, well, not childish, but I think there's a lot of people that, you know, in this day and age with misinformation and people spreading a lot of lies and stuff that it's just not worth it to try to do that. You know? I just, I don't think it's right to be doing that when there's so many people that fall for misinformation anymore. I mean, I didn't even see anything on YouTube that people posted, oh, I'm going to quit YouTube or whatever. You know, I didn't even see any of those. So the only thing I saw, like the big thing I saw was, you know, looking for hobo shoestring, the missing YouTuber rail, fan, uh, rail rider, you know. And I thought, you know, when I first saw those posts that day, I thought for sure, I'm like, there's no way. It's a, like, this has got to be a joke, right? Like, th th this can't be real. And it turns out he'd been missing since March 27th. And it's like, okay, this, you know, they wouldn't say that if it was on April 1st and a fool. So, yeah, that, that, was, that was the biggest stuff I saw, you know. But I don't I don't do April Fool's pranks. I never really did in my life. I don't know, just not my thing. I think a lot of society has moved away from doing those too. Again, just because of the amount of misinformation out there and all that, I think a lot of people try to stem away from doing that even on that day. Yeah, there's a couple people that made some posts and stuff. Like I said, did some things, small things. Nothing nothing like crazy, but, you know. It's still raining. Not hard, but, like, it's, you know, it's enough that I'm going to need the wipers every now and then. So. Should probably just go home and go to sleep at this point, huh? It's 2.22 a.m. <laughs> a silver retriever <laughs> yeah cheryl like i said it was nice today i mean we were supposed to have i mean earlier today we had rain and like nothing crazy we we're supposed to have rain showers we were supposed to have a chance for thunderstorms overnight here but um it seems like that dissipated so it's so early i know mandy oh and to answer uh pj's question about earlier no there's been no crazy storms here lately um we've had a few thunderstorms but nothing worth going live over they've they've literally what's up logan um the storms have literally been like you'll see a couple flashes of lightning and it'll still be raining, and then the lightning stops. Like, they fizzle out. The storms get weakened, you know? So we, we've, we haven't had anything, like, super crazy. Um, last week, when the flooding happened, we were supposed to have some thunderstorms the day before the flooding happened. And all we got was some heavy rains. We would, you know, we got some thunderstorms here and there. But it, it was like I said, you know, we'd see a flash of lightning, and then nothing for the rest of that storm. There was literally no other lightning. So we, we'd get a little bit of thunder, a little bit of lightning, and then it would die. Nothing like some of those. Uh... Oh, <laughs> yeah, guys. Uh, Mandy and I were over at the casino one night when a storm was rolling in. We were on top of the parking garage, floor, floor 10, the roof of the parking garage. So there's no cover above that. 
and we were watching a storm roll in. The storm was 25, 30 miles away. And when it got about 15 miles away, Mandy's hair, her, her long hair on the sides started standing up. And I told her, I said, we got to get the hell out of here now. She goes, why? I said, we got to get the hell out of here now. And when we got inside the building, I told her why. Because her hair was standing up and that's a potential for a lightning strike because you have a lot of potential electricity there. Um, you know, you're in an area of potential, they call it. So if you ever see that, and I mean, trust me, the strands of her hair were standing out like, like, like straight out. They, they were literally straight out. And, and on top of her head, they were up too. Like they were up on top of her head. And, and I told her, I said, let's get the hell out of here right now. Like she grabbed her purse and we, we ran and she's like, why? And I'm like, I'll tell you when we're inside. I'll tell you when we're inside. So we hurried up, got to the elevators and went down to the, you know, casino. And that's when I told her, I was like, Hey, you know, this is why. And she was like, Oh, <laughs> there's the helicopter again. You know, we could go over by the hospital. We can we'll go watch them if they're landing. Although they'll be landed by the time I get over there. Yep, there they go again. Let's see if they're dropping off. Let's go roll over there. It's not that far. I'm not going to buckle up. It's only within the city here, so it's not too bad. Uh, but it's going to take a few minutes to get over there. I'll show you guys where the hospital is here. It's not in the greatest area of Pittsburgh, but I'm not going to get out of the car and walk there, but... I'll show you where the hospital is here. So we're going across the 9th Street Bridge now, the Rachel Carson Bridge. Oh yeah, Logan. <laughs> That's crazy. The closest I've ever been to a lightning strike, I think was um, a away. It was lightning and instantaneous fire, but it was still close enough to be scary. <laughs> All right. I always slow down. Even though I have a flashing yellow light, there's always people that don't stop for the flashing red on the cross. So I always slow down and take my time going through those. I even look on green lights, man. I always look for cross traffic on green lights because you never know when somebody's going to blow through a red light. I'll slow down and take a gander over to the side, you know. But the hospital's up here. This is, we're going to be turning on Cedar Street. I have no, no turn on red sign, so I can turn on red. There's a camera. Those flashing blue lights, those are like cameras so they can watch the, the streets here. Because uh, about a year ago, I think it was a year ago, there was a shooting right here. And uh, three innocent people got caught in the crossfire and, and were killed. Oh, poor Ray minivan. Well, Ray had the green light on that one, guys. <laughs> yeah, guys, uh, uh, that intersection I went through with the flashing light, one over to the left, Ray got T-boned uh, many years ago. Well, he didn't get T-boned. He T-boned a car that ran the red light on the cross street. So, like, he had the green like this. He's coming along, and all of a sudden, a car just comes right in front of him, and he just plows into him. Um, Ray was okay. There's the hospital right there, guys. That is Allegheny General Hospital. That tower you see in front of you here. I know it's a little hard to see with the raindrops and everything and the street lights, but that is Allegheny General Hospital, one of the bigger hospitals here in town. And uh, the helipad is actually right there, and you can kind of see that the helicopter's still sitting there. I can see the flashing light there. See the flashing light on the left side? <laughs> so yeah, those red lights right there, those red lights along the corner to the side of the building, the, the top there, that's the helipad. Literally right above this part right here. So the helicopter takes off literally from right there. <laughs> I'm gonna go see if we can, I can still hear it. Yeah, he's still, uh, he's still idling up there. Wonder if he's taking off again. I think he is. Hold on. I can't see it. Oh, 
don't know, could you guys see it? I can't. I'm at a red light. Hang on. Let's see if I can get this. Yeah, I was hoping you guys could see that, but I didn't know how fast they were going to be. They So they did a drop-off. They uh, they must have did a drop-off there. Brought somebody to the hospital, and they must have hot-loaded off. Yeah, this isn't the safest part of town here. This is called the Mexican War Streets. And... There's been some uh, history of issues in this area, so. And if you go up that road, it gets even worse. So we're going to turn left here and get the hell out of here. <laughs> but, yeah, not the, not the safest part of town, let's just say. But good news, if somebody ever gets shot right here, the hospital's right there. And uh, talking to one of my buddies who's a Pittsburgh police homicide detective, he used to be a street beat cop, if you will, he used to work patrol. Um, he said that most people in Pittsburgh survive shootings, especially within city limits, because of the locations and the amount of hospitals that we have in this city. That supposedly, no matter where you are in a city, you are no more than like seven minutes from a hospital at worst. So, yeah, we have, oh my God, we have so many hospitals here. I can't even name them all because we have two giant corporations that run those hospitals. We have Highmark slash AHN Allegheny Health Network, and we have UPMC, University of Pittsburgh Medical Center. Um, two of the biggest health providers in Pennsylvania and actually in the country. And well, actually they probably are the two biggest in Pennsylvania and probably two of the biggest in the country. And not to mention, we also have a few other um, hospital systems around on the outskirts of the city. We have uh, Heritage Valley. We have Independence Health, which both have a couple of hospitals. Independence used to be Excella, for those of you that are familiar with Western Pennsylvania. Um, so we have quite a few medical facilities in our area. In fact, there's a hospital with a uh, with a helipad, like um, uh, I think it's 1,100 feet from my apartment. <laughs> Might be a little further than that. Yeah, it's about a quarter mile. Yeah, it's not that far. So yeah, the hospital hospital's busy tonight. AGH is hospital or AGH LA General Hospital is uh, busy tonight. Is hospital tonight? Is hot is hospital is busy tonight with helicopters in and out. So that's three that we've seen go in and leave that quick. So yeah. Drive myself to the casino. Brad, you sponsoring? I'll gladly go to the casino if somebody wants to throw some money over. I can't do a live there, but Oh, I know, Mandy, trust me, I know. And that's why AHN does the uh the neighborhood hospitals because they, they said UPMC can have the city. We'll take the suburbs. So yeah, Brad, I mean, if you want to throw some money over, I'll, I mean, I'll gladly go down there and, you know, I'll try to do stuff, but I can't guarantee a live stream because this casino gets a little iffy about filming. I can do the shorts real quick. Like when I'm playing the games with the shorts. Wow. That's crazy, Brad. You're nuts, dude. Uh, so yeah, guys, I'm not driving anywhere crazy. I'm literally just driving on city streets. I'm going right back over to where we were parked before. 
and uh, there is somebody in the middle of the road over here, so I'm going to dodge that completely. We're going to go. This is the red light that Ray T-boned somebody at right there. That intersection that I just came through. Ray T-boned somebody there years ago. <laughs> His minivan. All right, so here's the flashing red light that I stopped at earlier on the flashing yellow side. And there is nobody coming, so let's go back over here. What, Brad? What are you laughing at? Mandy will join. Come on, Brad. I mean, if you want to make it happen. <laughs> so we're going back across the 9th Street Bridge. Just going to get back onto the downtown side of things because there's better parking over here. Oh, the rain is coming down now. Rain is really starting to come down now. It's getting a little windy, too. Uh, so, Brad, I can keep you, like, texting uh, abreast of what's going on. I can play blackjack for you if you want, but... Anybody take my parking spot? Nope, it's still open. You know what's nice? If I do go over to Casino, I can go poop there. They have the cleanest bathrooms in the city. That's a that's the best place to stop if you're an Uber driver, man. The casino. Cleanest bathrooms in the city. All right, here's where I was parked before, and I'm back right where I was. Yeah, Mandy likes roulette. She's a big roulette. She can she can really like double stuff all the time. Yeah, I'd like to win thousands of dollars, uh, Cheryl. I wish I could. I mean, I've I did it last year. I had a good winning streak last year. I can't do anything this year. Well, I can't say that because January. I went to Jack and I filmed, I had $105 in free play. You guys are going to see a crazy series of videos from that. Um, the first game I played was old school double strike. And let's just say I won enough to be able to go film more videos. And then I kept winning the whole night. So you guys are going to see a bunch of winning videos coming up here. Uh, very soon, actually. They're, they're, the series of videos I think is going to start here. Let's see. Let's see when they're, where's my other phone? There it is. Um, 13 zeros in a row. Wow. All right. Give me a second here, guys. I'm pulling up on my other phone here. The YouTube channel. Oh, hey, Big Payback is live. My buddy's live in Vegas. Um, videos. Sort by, oh, I can't sort by unlisted. Hang on. Um, let's see. Where is... Double strike. One, two, three. Hold on. Did I already put that video out? High limit pink diamond. No. Uh, where is it at here? The major. I won the major. Oh, there it is. Um, looks like I have one video before the double strike video. So you guys are going to get the double strike video this Saturday, I think. No, next Tuesday. You're going to get it next Tuesday. So <laughs> the only fish that goes in my mouth. There you go, Junicorn. Hey, uh, PJ, you have to know Junicorn. Trust me. You just have to know him. He's a good dude. We're adults. We talk like adults. So there's a short that. Do I have it scheduled? Is that one scheduled? I don't think it is. Shit. I have a short that I didn't schedule? What the hell's wrong with me? So, yeah, there's going to be a series of videos coming up starting next Tuesday, guys, that started literally with $105 in free play. And 20 videos off of that free play alone. And I walked out of there that night with $1,300 in my pocket still. So that was January. And that $1,300 went to fixing my, um, what the hell did it fix on my car? That was my control arm. No. 
What did that fix? I'm trying to remember what I what I it was six hundred almost seven hundred dollars for that on my car. Uh, early March, I replaced my wheel bearing. That was five hundred dollars. I need new brakes. I need new front brakes. Apparently, that's going to be another couple hundred dollars. Uh, so, is it sleepy time or casino time? Well, I mean, like I said, if somebody wants to throw some money over to sponsor, I'll go to the casino. Oh yeah, and the uh, the wheel bearing. That was the that was on uh, in March. Yeah, Mandy says I need rear brakes. I know. I mean, I guess. I mean, it's been one hundred and twenty five thousand miles since I had the brakes replaced, so I guess it's time for new ones. <laughs> Judy Corn says casino, casino, casino. I I need money. That's the thing, guys. I don't have money. I would, but I don't have the money to do it. And the thing is, at this casino here, I can't really film or I might get yelled at. Now, I don't know how it is late night. If we do it on the down low, gamble my rent. I just paid my rent, Brad. It came out uh, Friday, so it's already paid. What is this truck doing, man? He just backed up, and now he's turning up the road. Okay, then. That was interesting. Yeah, somebody was shot and killed there like a year ago, over there. But that was targeted. Gamble your rent for May. Brad, I don't have any money right now, dude. Like, I don't have any extra money, dude. Like, I don't know where you think I have this, this money to pull from, apparently, but I literally have like $300 in my bank account right now, and that's building towards next month's bills. Oh, Junior Corn, that sucks. Cheryl says I got a credit card. Oh, Jesus. It's raining again. It's coming down a little harder. Joe's stripper money. Brad, actually, I don't even have 300 I have about 100 bucks that's coming out for gas from over the weekend. And I got to get gas again tonight after I'm done driving here. Usually, like every other night, I got to fill up. I get about 450 miles on a tank of gas here in my hybrid. And, of course, I mean, this hybrid is 10, almost, you know, it's 11 model years old. It's 10 years old to me. 275,000 miles, and I still get, you know, 36 miles to the gallon. I can't complain, so. Brad, I can't look at that on this phone, man. I'm on YouTube right now. <sighs> Yeah, you want to you send 200 bucks over, man? I'll go to the casino, sure. <laughs> I'll go play your favorite game, Huff and More Puff. Mandy will make a real. Dude, what's up, Trevor? Claw Crazy, what's up, man? Man, I got to get on that site again. I got to get some money to play that, too. Trevor, I need like a 500% code from you, please. <laughs> Just for me, though. Just for me. Um, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, but yeah, Brad, I mean, like I said, dude, you want to send some money over, I'll, I'll go to casino for you, man. I'll play it, and then whatever we end up with, I'll send back to you. I'll put it back in the bank and send it back over to you. But yeah, clock crazy. I need like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll take half of that. 250% code, please. Just for me though, and I'll do, I'll do a dedicated live stream to your website for that. All the corn dog eating if we get funded. Oh God. <laughs> so Brad, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna. Oh God, if it hits, I'll send it over. What do you mean? You said you were gonna send it over. Um, I need the money first to go play that hit, man. But. Uh, yeah, Claw Crazy, I got to do, because you have all those new prizes and you have all those new games and stuff, I got to showcase that. I would love to do that for you. And it wouldn't be like at 2 a.m. like this. It would be, it would be like, I don't know, 
4 p.m. Like when everybody's on YouTube. <laughs> but Cheryl, uh, or sorry, Clock Crazy, thank you so much for that uh, $5 super chat, man. <laughs> You're crazy, dude. Neo says, don't do it, Trevor. Make it a 420%. Dude, 420 for 420. Yes. <laughs> oh, well, Brad, that's good. that would take a while because I'm going to have to sell the crypto then to transfer it to my bank to take it to the casino. <laughs> that would take forever, dude. <laughs> Crazy double. Oh, you guys. Two hours. So much for a short live stream showing just the flooding. Well, the flooding from last week, the difference today. If you guys want to see the difference... Um, between the flooding last week at this time, literally at this time last week, when the rivers were at 28 feet high compared to tonight where the rivers are back to normal at 16 feet deep. So the rivers were 12 and a half feet higher than they normally are. And you can only imagine how crazy it was around here. Judy Corn says, remember Tariba days. Oh, I know, dude. In fact, my sister-in-law just asked me over the weekend. My niece turned 13 over the weekend, guys. I feel so old. My niece turned 13, and I feel like an old uncle. I remember holding her in my arms when she was born. She literally fit between my hand and my elbow. She fit between my hand and my elbow. I held her like that, literally like that, like a football. She was so little. Now she's, she's pretty tall. And she's a good soccer player. She's a good karate, um, self-defense, you know, individual. She hits hard. I like it because then she can defend herself. Um, she's hit me. Jokingly hit me, but she puts her might into it because she doesn't realize how to pull hits, you know, when you're, when you're play fighting. And that hurts. <laughs> that shit hurts, man. She hits hard for a 13-year-old. And like I said, she plays soccer, um, and she's on the Pittsburgh Riverhounds travel team, which is like a kid's like junior league, and they have to travel out of state and everything. And she's a good soccer player. She can kick, man. She will kick your ass. But, um, you know, play fighting and stuff, you know, or, you know, just just – little bit you know how you do like with uh with kids like a little bit of rough housing for fun like wwe stuff like pick them up and slam them on like a bean chair not like slam them but like you pick them up and like set them on a bean chair like you you act like you're doing a body slam kind of thing you know um or tossing them into like a like a huge pile of pillows or stuff and you know when you're doing that play fighting stuff you know, the kids don't realize that you're not trying to hurt them. You know, you're, you're, you're not trying to hurt them. And they don't understand that. So they use their full force running into you and hitting you. Now, obviously, sometimes, you know, they run into you. It doesn't hurt, you know. But my niece, man, she can kick. She can seriously kick. Oh, the 3 a.m. challenge locked Locked in Chuck E. Cheese, 3 a.m. overnight, haunted, no clickbait, not clickbait, whatever, bullshit. I'm gonna throw my I'm gonna throw my keys outside of my car and say, help, I'm locked in my car. Whoever walks by. Hey, can you give me my keys? I'm locked in my car. Not clickbait. Oh, uh, yeah, that's the 3 a.m. thing. You remember those that went around some years ago, especially during the pandemic? 3 a.m. Chuck E. Cheese. I don't even know if our Chuck E. Cheese is open anymore we have around here. I mean, it's 20-some minutes away. Is that a homeless person? I think it is. I don't think she has shoes on. Walking in the rain. Mandy comes and saves Joe again. I think it's a homeless person. I 
All right, Unicorn, no worries, man. Good to see you, dude. <laughs> poo poo caca. <laughs> do do poo poo caca. Pee pee. That's uh, Steve Carell from um, uh, Bruce Almighty. <laughs> do do caca pee pee. Yes, that's that's from um, Bruce Almighty. Like I said, that's uh, Steve Carell playing Evan Baxter in the movie Bruce Almighty. Can I transfer my DMB card to you? I mean, if you're not going to use it anymore, Brad, I mean, sure, you can just send me the, the screenshots of it in your app. Uh, send me the QR code and, like, the, the, the PIN number on it, and I can get it transferred over to my card. Sure. Hello, police officer number two. Oh, he's turning. Is he turning up? Oh, he's backing up, too. Now he's turning up this road. He looks bored. The one, the pastor sitting there like this. <laughs> Here comes somebody on a bike. I think it's the same dude I saw over by the uh, river walk. Or no, yeah, when I was over on the other side of the river. I think that's the dude that I, uh, dude I saw on the bike over there. Pretty sure it's the same person, same bike and everything. He's dressed the same way, so it's quite possible. Hmm. Uh, I'm tired. I don't know why. Oh, excuse me. I think just the eclipse and everything and that long drive, and then I went out and drove last night after the eclipse. And Oh, big raindrops coming down now. $60 in chips. Holy crap, Brad. Sleepy time because bored. Um, That, and I'd like to get up early. I want to go get my tires rotated. It's been about 10,000 miles on them. I should have been rotating. I should have rotated them about 2,500 miles ago, but I forgot. I've just been lazy. Yeah, I need to go get the tires rotated. Put 10,000 miles on my car since December 23rd. That's when I got my tires, two days before Christmas. That's Saturday. Oh, here comes that cop again. So he went up the road in front of me, came down the road behind me. And now he's driving down the street. Oh, yeah, Brad, I've seen that in the app where you can, yeah, you can risk your tickets for chips. <laughs> How much is rent my way? Well, I'm actually very lucky. I have a very nice landlord. Um, when I moved to his apartment a few years ago in the building, you guys remember when I set up the new YouTube office and everything, like the second bedroom is my YouTube office. Um, when I moved to his apartment, I ended up getting a reduction in the price I was paying at the building. Uh, because it's each landlord controlled, and uh, it is eight hundred and fifty dollars a month. But I was paying damn near a thousand before. So that when I first moved there three years ago, it's actually been three years, beginning of this month, three years that I've lived in that apartment now. Um, I was paying, I think it was eight twenty five a month. So it went up a little bit, not much, obviously, but I always ask the landlord, I'm like, Hey, you know, if you, you know, if you need to increase it for trash or whatever, just let me know. You know, it only goes up by like five, 10 bucks a year. So it's not too bad. Um, but it does go up like everything else except for my income, you know, <laughs> Hmm. 
Mandy says, beep, beep, beep. Yeah, backing up. <laughs> That's me when I walk backwards in general. Get it? Because I'm fat. Ha, ha, ha. Ooh. I know you guys heard that one. <laughs> I know you guys heard that one. But the 100 what, Brad? I don't, I don't know what you're saying, dude. Oh, that. <laughs> Three steps to 1K. Um, yeah, I think I'm just going to go home at this point. Been two hours and ten minutes on this live stream. I did not even expect to go anywhere near this long. Go, speed racer. Go, go, speed racer. Go, speed racer. Go. I wonder if I should go sit over by where the trains go. Or maybe I'll go sit at the nature spot. Right, Mandy? Go sit at the nature spot along the river. Not the one I showed you guys earlier, but... Play Arcade Online? I have been saving my chips on there for like a year. Like my free ones I get every day. I don't know about a year, but definitely like six months. And I am up to like 112 chips on there. And I wish uh, Claw Crazy, if he's still watching, I wish he would do something like that where you can get like a, you know, a token a day or something like that. That would be kind of cool. Oh, my God. Is that the first Nightbot message I've seen all week or the all, all, all stream all week? Whatever. Same difference. Yeah, but they go quick, Brad. That's the thing. Most of the games on there are like two and a half to three chips to play. So there's only like 40 plays there. And it's not like you get a free token every day. Sometimes you get a free token. Some days you get free XP, which is their experience points to level up. Um, you don't get, ever get free tickets. But you either get like a free token or like free XP. And yeah. There's something on my neck right here next to my mole. It's like it's a little bump. I think it's a pimple, but I'm not sure. Hello, Super. What's up? Trade your tickets for tokens in the shop sometimes. Yeah, but I don't ever have that many uh, tickets there, Brad. And trading for tokens there is not worth it. Trading for tokens on Claw Crazy? 100% worth it. Because some of the games you can win your, your tickets back in no time. Especially if you win Keymaster. If you win Keymaster in one play, if it's ready. Yep. <laughs> I am right here. It's raining. You guys can see the rain on my windows there. I can't see the radar because I don't have on this other phone. I don't have any of the uh, radar apps. I don't think I do. No, I don't. I do not. Wait. No, I do not. Only on the phone I'm streaming on. Why am I not streaming on this phone? I don't know. The phone I literally got for YouTube alone because of storage and everything. Here's some of the Eclipse photos. Look. This one's cool right here. This one is cool right here. See that red on the bottom? That's a solar flare on the sun from the uh, total eclipse. That one is that that one was cool. Let's see if my video got anything. So I tried to take a video of like the darkness and stuff changing, but. I'm going to have to delete. Oh, wow. Yeah, you can actually see it getting darker. Oh, that was cool. Okay. Oh, there's the 360-degree sunset. So that is what it looks like in the sky all around you whenever the, the sun is covered. It looks like a 360-degree sunset. It is really cool. <laughs> 
Brad, what are you saying, man? Where was I? Uh, in the path of totality. I got to see the total sunset. Or total sunset. Total eclipse for 2 minutes and 35 seconds, I believe. And then you can see the diamonds start to form, and that's when I stopped the video. Although I wish I would have kept recording because you could see... Brad, you have some serious anger issues, dude. You need to really, um, you need to go some anger management classes. And I think you need to go to Gamblers Anonymous. And I mean, I'm saying that in a very kind and, uh, the kindest way that I can, because I think you have some issues, dude, uh, especially the stemming from gambling that you definitely need to, to work on. Um, I'm saying it in the nicest way I can, but you get, you get very angry, very upset over the gambling losses and you can't be that way, man. You can't because that that's when it becomes a problem when you're not having the fun anymore for you right now. It's not fun. I can tell, and I don't want you to be going down this path, man. I want you I want you to be happy. I want you to enjoy it. And yo, know, you you throwing stuff, you breaking stuff, you getting angry over I mean, you just have to to understand that gambling is a losing game in the long run. You know, it's not a way to make money, dude. It really isn't. And I mean, I know there's a bunch of YouTubers and stuff out there that make it look so easy that they only post winning videos all the time. And those guys like Mr. Handpay and, and Vegas Matt and some of those other guys that that bet a hundred, two hundred and fifty dollars a spin, you know, make it look so easy. What they don't show you, what these guys don't show you is the thousands and tens of thousands of dollars that they lose that they don't post those videos. That's why on my gambles channel, I post videos, whether I win or lose, because I show you the real side of it. They, this is what actually happens at the casino. Yes. There are times where I've had very lucky streaks of wins. There are times where I've had very lucky break evens the entire time I'm there. And then there's times where I have literally taken $500 to the casino and it's gone in 30 minutes and that's it. It's gone and I'm done. And I have to leave the casino after 30 minutes. Am I sad? Yes. Do I get upset? Not really because I took the money to lose, but it's just like, damn it. I wish I could have had at least a little bit more play out of it, but I don't let it irk me. I, I know that I'm going and I know that I'm probably going to lose that money. So that's why you see those gambling videos and even the live streams. You guys have seen so many live streams on that gambles channel where we've gone to zero and we've tried everything we could to try to win, you know, betting bigger, buying bonuses. We call them the hail Marys, you know, the, the, the crazy everything to, you know, quote, try to win. Um, going full degenerate mode and, you know, we know we're probably going to lose, but there have been times that yes, that full degenerate mode will get you a win. Um, but the thing is to remember that those other YouTubers that have hundreds of thousands of subscribers, tens of thousands of, of subscribers, look at what they're posting. They only post their wins and their big win videos. They don't post losses. And it's a false sense of reality. Even like, even when I go to the arcade, you guys have seen, I've had videos where I can hit jackpots all day long. And then I've had videos where nothing goes right where I can't hit a jackpot for the life of me, or I only get one or two the entire time I'm there. You know, 
So don't don't let that. Yeah, it hurts viewership to to post losses. The pro see, and that's why I've never grown as a YouTuber like massive, you know, because I've never presented that false sense of reality in both the arcades and in the gambling world. I do not do that. I don't. I don't just post wins or this is just a great video or anything. Um, you know, if I did any videos like Arcade Matt does, you know, the can I win it in $25? And if I fail, do I still post the video? Most YouTubers were going to say, no, I'm not going to post that video. They want you to, to, to win. You know, people want you to win, but I also show the real side of things. And, I, and, and the problem with being real is nobody likes real. They want that fantasy world. That's why they go to the movies. That's why they watch TV. That's why they watch YouTube. They want that fantasy world. Nobody shows them the real side of things. Except for me. There are other you know, slot YouTubers out there, arcade YouTubers even. All they ever do is win, 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 win. But when you go to the arcade or you go to the casino, all you ever do is lose, 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 lose. And, and you sit there, and trust me, there's many times I'll sit there and go, how can these people just keep winning all the time? Because what they don't show you is the 10 or 15 videos they've recorded that they didn't do jack shit. <laughs> you know? That they threw five hundred dollars in the machine, didn't hit a single bonus, betting five and ten dollars a spin, you know, and that's the other thing. I can't bet that big. I cannot do twenty, twenty-five, thirty dollars a spin like some of these other YouTubers do. They get sponsorships. They get you know they have good, high-paying jobs in life that are outside of YouTube. Um, yes, they get some. Uh, ad revenue from YouTube and stuff, but I can't afford to do those types of videos. And again, nobody wants to see the guy that bets 75 cents on a machine. Everybody wants to see the guy that can bet $200 on a machine and hit a big $20,000 jackpot. Not real, realizing that that's only a hundred X. If I bet a dollar and I win a hundred dollars, it's the exact same thing. It's a hundred X, but it's not as exciting because it's not twenty thousand dollars. One of these days, I am going to hit a grand on one of these machines. I will eventually hit a grand one of these days. It's you know the probability is there. The possibility, eh, who knows? But the probability is there that it's eventually going to happen. I've hit the major a bunch of times on Huff and More Puff. One of these days, I'm going to hit a freaking grand. I would love to. But until I do, you know, I can't do those crazy bets. Yes, I will take a couple hundred dollars into the high limit room when I have the money. If I win $1,000, I will take two or $300 into the high limit room. Sure. Will I do a video on it? If I'm at Jack Thistledown? Sure. <laughs> um... Do I do it all the time? Absolutely not. I don't go to the high limit unless I have the bankroll to do it. And even then, it's only part of my bankroll. Like I said, I go to casino and I usually take like two or three hundred dollars. Okay, that's like my budget. If I'm going to film a video, I'll usually put like a hundred bucks in and do like dollar bets, dollar twenty bets. Um, you know, the rule of thumb is to do a hundred times your bet. So bankroll a hundred times your bet. Um, so like if you're betting a dollar, a hundred dollars in the machine is a hundred bets. So if you're going to be doing $5 bets, you better damn well have $500 in that machine to do a hundred bets. Because again, probability says that you're going to hit a bonus or something within those hundred spins. Will it happen all the time? No. Does it happen more often than not? Yes. Chances are you're going to hit some type of bonus. You know, and you have a chance then to hit something big. But 
This is why it's gambling and stuff like that, you know? And the other thing is, too, why can I do more videos for my gambling channel than I can for the arcade channel? Simple mathematics. If I take $100 to the arcade and I spend $100 at the arcade, I can't do anything else with it. If I take $100 to the casino and play it on a machine and win $500 or break even after 20 minutes of filming, I can take that $100 out of that machine, take it to another machine and do a whole new video and do it again and do it again and do it again. So that's why I can definitely record more videos for the gambling channel than I can the arcade channel. <clears throat> because of that ability to recycle the money, whereas the arcades, I can't recycle the money as much. And that's that's one of the problems. So, you know, just how it is. I need a little bit of water. Sorry, guys. <sighs> Stay hydrated, my friends. Stay hydrated. What's up, Nate? How you doing, man? So, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> that's just the reality of the difference between the arcades and casinos, you know? I can't tell you guys how many times I've taken the same $100, did a 15, 20-minute video on that machine, called it a video, took that $100 back out of the machine because I broke even or I made money or whatever, took it out of that machine, went to another machine, started a new video and said, hey, guys, I'm back at Jack Thistledown. And I'm going to be playing this game now. I have $200 in there. Or I have $100 in there. And we're going to be doing these bets at this denomination level. And then I'll play that game for 15, 20 minutes. And then, oh, hey, I have $500 in there. I'll cash it out. Then I go over to the machine. I change my ticket into money. <clears throat> and then I go to another slot machine. And I, I'm putting a Ricola in my mouth, by the way, because my throat's hurting from talking so much. Um... Uh, and then I'll go to the, uh, you know, the, the bill breaking machine or the ticket, you know, changer, excuse me, ticket changer. I'll take 500 bucks. I'll put 400 in my pocket. I'll take a hundred dollars, go to another slot machine. Hey guys, I'm back at Jack, Jack this is down today. We're going to be playing mighty cash or we're going to be playing lightning link or whatever. And do that over and over and over again with that money. I wish I could do that at the casino or at the arcade. I would love to be able to do that at the arcade. Take a hundred bucks the arcade and play on it for four, five, six videos would be amazing. And then there's times I've gone to the casino with three hundred dollars and I've been able to record all of three videos or two videos because I put an extra hundred in the machine. It just happens. And I have, you know, you guys saw a series of videos there recently that I did not do so well on. Um, it just happens. But the next series of videos, I did phenomenal on. Like I said, I recorded two, 20 videos on $105 of free play. I did pretty good. And I still walked out of the casino with a profit after being there for nine hours recording. And that's the other thing. A lot of people don't realize how many hours go into doing these videos at the arcade, at the casino, then editing them. Now the casino ones, I don't usually edit much unless I have to put them together. Like if the phone freezes while recording, um, which I don't know what's happening with that, but it's the iPhone 15 and uh, the video, the, the, for whatever reason, the video camera, every now and then it'll freeze. But, and it's happening not just to me. I've, I've seen it on Vegas Low Roller. I've seen it on other YouTube channels. Um, I think Brian Christopher's had that issue happen. I don't know what it is. It's iPhone 15. It's not, no other iPhones. It's only the iPhone 15 series. And there's a bug or something going on with the, the video, the camera, whatever, that it is causing it that when you're recording, it'll literally just freeze and stop. And then you have to press record again. Um, 
but for the casino videos, it's usually me just filming them. Like I'll hold the camera like this. I'll hold it up at the machine. And I'll say, all right, guys, we're going to play Huff and More Puff today. And then I'll bring it down and, okay, here's the screen and blah, 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 blah. Here's what's going on. You know, this is what we're betting and blah, blah, blah. And then I'll say like, oh, you know, we need six or more of these hard hats to get a bonus. Or we need three or more of the buzz saws to get a bonus and blah, blah, blah. Here's the major. Here's the grand, you know. And just talk up the machine, talk up the video for the first two minutes. It's two minutes I don't have to gamble. <laughs> Save my money, at least, for a little bit. Um, yeah, and then go from there. So, and usually, I usually don't take this handheld thing. Sometimes I will, because some machines, um, the seats are attached to the machine. You know, there's like a platform underneath the machine. The seats are attached to the... Uh, the machine and you can't slide them out so i can't put my tripod between me and the machine so i'll use my thing that i'm using now the handheld device and yeah <laughs> but when i can use the tripod it makes it so much easier because it's stable on the ground it makes it so much easier to just sit there and press the button around it and like I said, Jack Thistledown has been amazing. Talking to the management there and security. Um, you know, as long as you're not causing a problem for the other people, the, you know, they, they don't care. They don't care. Film yourself playing the slot machines all you want. They want the publicity. And um, one of the best casinos that I've ever been to to work with for filming. You know, like before, before Dave and Buster's had their filming policy and everything where we didn't have an issue anymore, um, you know, Fun For All was always okay with filming for the most part. I try not to film when it's busy there because I don't like getting a lot of people in the background. Um, yeah, yeah, Brad. PA Scratcher guy's never been to a Dave and Buster's. Really, man? Wow. But yeah, the um, yeah the the management there has been really awesome, and I give uh, a lot of credit to that to the big payback, my buddy, the big payback. Um, he he worked with them to show like, hey, this is what I do as a YouTuber. You know, these are the type of types of videos that I do, and that's what I do with people too. I will go give them the business card. Hey, check out the channel see if you like my style you know i this is what i try to do i try to just record the games you know i'll shout out shout out your business um you don't have to give me any special perks it's like the arcades and stuff um you know when i went down to myrtle beach uh about six years ago uh there was a place down there called the boardwalk arcade it was the gay dolphin gift cove uh boardwalk arcade is the full name of it Really cool place. The lady that owns it is like was 85 years old. I hope she's still alive because she's freaking awesome. And I went in the one day, you know, when I first got down there because I didn't want to film that day. I wanted to film later in the week. And I went and I, I talked to the management. I said, hey, I said, you know, can I talk to the owner? Is she available? You know, whatever. Um, and I ended up talking to her. I said, hey, you know, I do arcade YouTube videos. This is what I do. Um, would it be a problem if I filmed in your establishment? I'm not looking for any type of special treatment. I'm not looking for any type of credits or perks or anything like that. I'm coming in to support your business by spending my money. And I want to showcase this for my fans. Um, you know, I'd like to give if essentially free advertisement, you know. Now, some places will offer stuff. They'll say, hey, you know, if you come in, we'll give you a gift card or a play card worth $100 or something, you know, because you're giving us advertisement. And I always say I don't, don't want that. You know, I always tell them I don't want to – I don't want that. You know, I just I just want to come in and play and be able to film and spend my money to support your business. And this uh, this older lady was cool as hell. She's like, yeah, I'll check it out. She, she took my business card. She checked me out. I went in the next day with my camera and everything. And she said, you're good to go. She goes, I love it. You guys are you're, you're awesome. And I mean, that was whenever I was filming with Matt a lot too. Um, 
She goes, I think you're awesome. She goes, I enjoyed it a lot. And I would very much love to have our arcade on your channel. And I'm like, oh, thank you so much. So I told her, I said, hey, this is what I'm going to do. I'm probably going to win a bunch of tickets. You know, I'll probably be redeeming for something. And she goes, that's no problem. Um, and I said, I'm just going to, you know, try to stay out of the way. I'm trying not to record other people. I'm not going to record workers. Like, that's the biggest thing. Don't record the workers. Um, you know, don't be obnoxious. You know, you can you can get a little happy when you hit a jackpot and stuff or, or hit something crazy or redeem for something crazy. Or if I hit Keymaster or something, you know, um, I'm going to get excited, especially like, like, like I said, those redemption games, Keymaster, um, Winner's Cube, Stacker, you know, those type of games. If I win a major prize, what you see is legit excitement. Like, holy crap, I just won this game. Barber Cut, you know, those, those types of games. Um, because I can't get excited over a ticket jackpot. I'm, I just, I can't because I know I'm going to hit it. <laughs> you know, like I know I can hit power roll. I know I can hit tower of tickets. I know I can hit the monster, you know, monster drop regular jackpot. You know, I can time it through the hole. Um, you know, I know I can hit those jackpots and I can't fake getting excited over that. And I won't do that. I won't fake getting excited over hitting a jackpot of, you know, 400 tickets or 500 tickets or a thousand tickets. I fake it when I'm with my nieces because they get excited over Uncle Joe winning, you know, a big jackpot for them of tickets and I'll get excited with them, but that's for them. I won't do it for the channel or YouTube or whatever, because that's not me. I can't sit there and go, Oh my God, I freaking won 500 tickets. Ah! You know, it's 500 tickets. whoop de doo what, what? I could get a stapler from the arcade or like a handful of Tootsie Rolls or whatever. Like I can't get, I can't fake that excitement because A, I know I'm going to hit that jackpot and B, I mean, it's just a small jackpot, really, you know? So I don't fake it when it comes to those types of games. Now, I mean, there are times where I get frustrated. There are times where I get frustrated, like playing Cyclone and not hitting the jackpot. And then when I finally do, it's like, God damn, finally, I hit the damn jackpot. Um, you know, that's, that's a different type of reaction, <laughs> but like, like I said, when I win stacker, when I win winner's cube, barber cut, key master, that is legit excitement because again, we all know those are payout based games. We all know they have a riggage, you know, probability to them. Um, and when you catch them when they're ready and you win, it is just a whole nother level of excitement that that is legit real excitement. When I say, oh my God, I just won whatever. Like, like I don't get that excited about Barber Cut because it's like, when I know it's ready, I know it's going to take a while to still cut the string, but still it's like, dude, we're going to win this today. We're going to win this prize today. Um, oh, here comes a helicopter again. Uh, Cheryl, good night. Thanks for stopping by hanging out with us. I hear the helicopter again. Where are they? I don't see them. Oh, there they are. Oh, they're going that way. Hmm, interesting. They must be going to a children's hospital or something. So yeah, children's hospitals up that way, uh, a couple miles. Um, but yeah, like winning Keymaster, winning Winner's Cube, especially a big prize. Oh, oh my God! Like that—that that is just oh, that's an excitement level like no other. You know, uh, infectious. There is no patterns. 
<laughs> it's just follow the case. Now, I mean, there's different ways that they shuffle. I mean, cases will, in, in the version without the wheel on top, the deluxe version, the cases will always overlap, either up and down or left and right. They will always shift one way or the other like that. Um, so they'll switch like a case that's above, you know, above and below will switch, you know, or beside each other will switch. Um, the, the version with the wheel on top, the deluxe version of wheel of deal or no deal. And I have a video on this from years ago, like eight, eight years ago on my channel that shows the two versions of deal or no deal. And I have a voiceover on it. It shows it. Um, the deluxe version, the cases never overlap each other. They move they move either left or right, and the case that's next to it will also move one other direction. But they will never overlap each other. That one's a little bit harder to follow. Um, but yeah, if you look up my channel, like if you look up JJ General 1 Deal or No Deal, it's one of those videos that's way back, like eight years ago. I think it was 2016 I did this video. And it shows the two different versions side by side. And you can see how the case is shuffled. We, we did it in slow motion. Matt actually edited that video for me. Um, did all that, showed it and everything. And, you know, I'm I, um, very thankful for him for, for doing that. Had to, had the microphone to, re to voice over record. But that video shows the differences between the two games. So, <clears throat> excuse me. All right, guys, it is 3.30 in the morning. I think I'm going to call it here. But I uh, appreciate everyone watching here, hanging out. Kind of got off of the topic of the what the video was actually about, you know, showcasing what the rivers look like now as opposed to what they looked like a week ago when they were 12 feet higher. <laughs> Mandy, yes, I'm still live. I have my phone plugged in, so I'm charging. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for, for watching, hanging out tonight. I know we got into some uh, crazy discussions and stuff, but I'm trying to make some money here. and um, Well, maybe not tonight. I think I'm going to go home tonight, but... I think I'm going to go to Dave and Buster's tomorrow. Like I said, I'm going to go talk to, um, I think I'm going to go talk to the amusement manager at the, uh, homestead location, the waterfront location. Cause again, he supposedly has tracked down my phantom card with the tickets and, um, why does that policeman have his alley light on? Why does he have his white light on his light bar? I think he forgot he has it on. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm going to go talk to the amusement manager because I have, from two years ago, I have a card. I have the physical card on me. Well, not on me. It's at home. I have the subsequent cards that says it was transferred to, but yet the stuff is still showing in the app on the on the first card for whatever reason and it's lost in the ether but he has supposedly tracked them down and I'm supposed to be getting all those back that was January was the last time I talked to him before he was leaving to Florida to go down for his grandmother's funeral uh, she was 93 so he said it's not sad he goes it's a celebration of her life for how long she lived and I said that's a good thing so I haven't talked to him since January I gotta go down there and talk to him again just because I haven't been down there since then, basically. Well, I was down there, I think, in March. But he wasn't free because he was training new people. So, unfortunately, the day I went down, he was not free. So, but I got to go talk to him. I think I'm going to try tomorrow. Well, later today. What's up, Seeker Carper? He says it's 8.30 a.m. in the U.K. Yes, you guys are now caught up back to the five hours ahead. Um with your time change. <laughs> so like I said, guys, I might do a video. I might, if I could save some money up and do it on Friday, I might be able to do a live stream from Jack um, on the Gambles channel. So, because I'm going to have at least 150 free play there. So 
I get a couple hundred together, I might be able to do like a $500 live stream there, you know, 150 in free play and 350 in cash. So stay tuned for that. We might be able to get you a live stream on that channel Friday. The only reason I can't play the regular stuff that we normally do with Don, Will, and Carson is uh, we'll call it technical difficulties. And it has to do with a <clears throat> program that we use to access the websites. I'm not going to say anything more than that. You could probably figure out from there. Uh, but anyways, thank you guys for watching. This was almost a three-hour live stream here. I did not expect it to go this long. I might be able to catch a ride to the airport here if anything's worth it. But thanks for hanging out tonight. It's been a lot of fun. Um, good day to all of you, or good night to all of you, whoever's still watching. And I hope you guys have a wonderful April, was it 10th now? So enjoy your, uh, enjoy your day. And uh, much love to all of you. But for now, from the general to the arcade army, stay safe, take care of each other, always have a positive mental attitude. And as I always say, I'll catch you guys next time. See ya.